Greetings fellow captains and welcome back to another episode of World of Warships with the Hive Hand and today we're having a look at the Tiger 59. Right, first of all, not gonna lie, the ship did take me a little bit of time to get in the hang of. Not too long, but a little bit. So um, from from my first impressions where I was a bit, mm, I don't know about this ship. Honestly, throughout yesterday and today I have completely changed my mind. I actually really, really like this ship. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, but it's straight up, if you like British cruisers, you're going to like this ship. You're going to have a good time in it. It's going to be great. If you don't like British cruisers, probably best to to, uh, to steer clear of uh, of Tiger 5-9. Um, so, uh, obviously, it's a premium ship. Every single premium ship, or, well, most of them. The key thing is they're supposed to have something unique. They're not a copy of a tech tree ship. Uh, so it is um, it is unique. It's very unique. Um, as you can uh, probably see, uh, there's, a, there's a standout feature. And if you haven't noticed by yet, it's the guns. Or lack thereof. It has two turrets. And each of those two turrets only has two barrels. Yes, that's why right. four, four guns uh, on the uh, on the entire on the entire ship. So instantly, and I had the same thought, and a lot of other people are going to judge this ship on the fact that it's it's not got many guns. These particular 152 millimeter guns. Unlike the 152mm on the Belfast and the Fiji, which takes seven and a half seconds to reload, reload in 2.9 <laughs> seconds um, with the, with the build I'm using. So yeah, the fire rate is is absolutely, and I mean it is genuinely the fire rate on these guns is is is, is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> they are they are really really good guns. Um, they have very nice gun handling as well. Um, so they're not they're not too floaty, um, but they have got a decent arc, so you can shoot over islands as well uh, with the ship, which is it makes it quite versatile. There's a lot of situations that this thing can handle quite well. Um, some more distinct features about the guns: these turrets rotate 360 degrees, um, which can be a bit of an Achilles heel, because their turrets are uh, well generally quite slow so for example okay let's have a look at uh let's have a look at the old fiji here uh, so stats wise turret turn time 25.7 degrees for 180 degree for 180 and obviously they uh, <laughs> they don't rotate 360 degrees either uh why right. yeah tiger there it is 0.7 seconds so and honestly that's 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 probably the biggest thing that sets us apart. You don't get caught out. You you're never without your guns pointed in the right direction because if a ship catches you by surprise, 4.7 seconds later, your guns, no matter where it is, are gonna be on it, regardless. Um 3500 uh 35 uh sorry, th 3520 maximum AP shell damage. It does only have AP, it doesn't have torpedoes. It does have pretty good AA defense. Uh, it's reasonably maneuverable. And concealment, that's it's a British cruise. The concealment overall is uh, generally pretty good. Uh, so the next unique thing, so it's not just the, uh, it's not just the turrets that are unique. Uh, it's also the hull. So British cruisers, uh, particularly at tier six, uh, are very thin. I say British cruisers, all cruisers, very thin. At tier six, uh, every single other cruiser apart from the Talon has 16 mil of armor plated in. As you can see, Tiger 59 has 25 mil, and it has 25 mil all the way around. Uh, it's also got a really nice armor belt uh, as well. That uh, we can actually find the armor belt. Uh, so 25 to 83. And then obviously the Citadel is uh, is hiding uh, behind all that, and the Citadel is quite low down. So to be honest, I have I have taken Citadel hits, 
but not many and I've played like 35 maybe pushing 40 games uh, in the ship by now and obviously suffering from uh, new ship syndrome where absolutely everyone wants to <laughs> wants to shoot you so yeah it has got a big citadel but it is quite low uh, it's not quite below the water uh, but you know what's above the water is 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 very small um, so that is uh, that is another advantage so unlike uh, you know the Fiji the Belfast uh, even the Edinburgh if you kind of make a mistake and show a bit too much broadside uh, th this can actually tank which is uh, obviously a, a massive advantage uh, to the ship um, build wise um, it, it took me a while I'm not gonna lie I'm not gonna lie um, I went through uh, I went through various builds um, this is about the third iteration of Bruce, Bruce Ferrigio we've put on there we've done a couple of things with Hot Rod, Jerlois, uh William Tennant as well um, has been a, has been a been a thing but we've we finally settled back on Bruce Frazier and for for a couple of very simple reasons we'll have a quick look at the commander build um, itself so first of all inspirations I've gone for Nikolai Von Essen to increase the minimum ricochet angles of the shells British AP has better shell angles anyway um, but just making them a bit better um, it's, it can't hurt can't hurt the ship at all uh, using Yamamoto for AP shell penetration as well because you've only got AP you know why not buff the AP let's make uh, the absolute most out of it uh, first perk piercer um, I've gone for piercer again for a penetration multiplier absolutely no point in using beyond range because when you start stretching out you know 16 17 kilometers on a pair of guns uh, British guns at least shells do get very floaty and the travel time is a lot and essentially you're gonna waste more shots than than you're gonna hit um and when i hit i'd rather penetrate um <laughs> so that explains that uh row two uh we don't have hg we don't have torpedoes so the only one that makes sense is to run before too late uh third row um uh, velocious or light fortress honestly could be quite good you don't take many citadel hits um as long as you're not stupid in it, at least. Um, uh, so, Light Fortress, I, it bounces a lot. It, I don't think it's really worth it. Um, but punch through, because that's, again, focusing on our armor piercing. We only have armor piercing, so let's make it work as much as we possibly can. Uh, gone for fixated, so better shell grouping and better dispersion of the guns and refill station. Honestly, I don't know if refill station is really worth it. Uh, we save 0.3 of a second on our reload, uh, but we do gain that extra, that extra uh, 10 kilometer range when uh, when within I think it's five or six kilometers uh, or three and a half kilometers, sorry, of a uh, of a friendly ship. Uh, fully packed is definitely consumable. I would consider running, and I probably will spend a couple of days at least running fully packed for that extra radar and extra smoke but honestly i find i'm not relying on the smoke and the radar as much as i would in in a belfast or a fiji or an edinburgh um for that matter uh so you know it's it's a bit of a toss-up but yeah for the moment we're going with the uh with the marginally faster reload right so before we get into the gameplay, which I'm going to show you, which, of course, is ridiculously good gameplay, because why would I show you what's bad? <laughs> you know, what, why, why would I post, a, you know, a, a mediocre game? I'm not going to, and I wouldn't expect anyone to. Um, but, but quite simply, I could have posted any of the games, pretty much, that I've played today. And, uh, and this ship's receiving a lot of hate and i honestly don't know why um i've been <laughs> i've been on facebook i know i know i should stay away from facebook i've been on facebook and a lot of people seem to have some very strong opinions about this ship um without actually playing the ship without understanding it they're just like oh this is trash panda uh hot garbage all sorts and honestly <laughs> I, th I think i'm in love <laughs> genuinely i have been thoroughly enjoying this ship so i'm not doing this just to show off um 
honestly please don't take it that way it's really not what it's meant to do i'm just highlighting that despite what people might think about this ship it's it's not what they think what they think it is right okay so basically we've got 12 games here okay 12 matches as you can see one loss uh in uh, in 12 games right okay so this is the one you're gonna see literally i woke up this morning i was like right gonna do a video on a tiger 3400 base xp straight off the bat kraken unleashed uh posted on facebook going yeah all these people saying the tiger's garbage yeah check this out and of course you get the obligatory oh well it's because your team were crap and the enemy team is crap and oh, if you get lucky yada 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 so so i was like why well, okay i'm not gonna make the video straight away i'm gonna play it a couple of more times and i'm gonna see how it does and granted by a scoring game that i had but 2500 base xp very next match um next match just shy of 2700 base xp you know all right okay was this favorable matchmaking yeah okay you could say this favorable matchmaking i'm top tier yeah all right okay fair enough fair enough i'll give you that favorable matchmaking not a problem at all uh next game so we're up against mines implacable bismarck sinop king george uh you know some heavy ships there shy 2700 base xp again uh you know we we are not top tier uh in this there are oh i forgot about did i miss the odin then the odin there as well right okay so on to uh on to the next match 2000 base xp uh i actually remember this one because the the goods yeah is is actually a buddy of mine uh he's uh goes by sufu tricks uh over on twitch and uh, i actually popped into his stream after the match to 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 say hello and and kind of grill him a little bit um basically me and the kagro absolutely dominated the uh the a flag on shards um uh nerd nerd goods mr lemon and uh and vengeful squid uh in the nelson were basically then caught in a crossfire because they, they they had the the dreaded b spawn and their team fell apart so quickly there was literally nothing else for me to do that match really really <laughs> didn't last long um and yeah it, it basically it was just the way it happened but again second on the team right okay uh on to the next shall we right okay so team results right oh there we go there we go tigers tigers crap yeah tigers rubbish 1600 base xp this is the first match under 2k <laughs> um we we're also we had a team with uh Matt jerk and patriarchy as well uh fellow cc's literally not divisioned just absolutely completely random um and yeah okay this kind of point out the situational thing where where the tiger's not strong uh he was caught on c flag with the gnison hour and the massachusetts gnison hour was actually uh that one kill that i managed to gain and in all fairness by the time uh, the Massachusetts got killed, um, the Gneisen now pushed round. Um, I finished him off. I believe I was being assisted by uh, this gentleman right here in the uh, in the Iowa. Uh, by the time by the time these two were dead, which is kind of the time where you know I could start playing and uh, and taking advantage of uh of, of uh the tiger's guns um the enemy team is dead honestly that, that game was over so unbelievably fast uh but again another win there we go next battle 2000 base xp you know beaten by a ween mar well, yeah, completely overpowered uh this game uh, fair play credit where credit's due uh big 8 10 here chaos they they had a, they had a really good game they were absolutely uh they were absolutely cleaning up um i was the last surviving on my team but yeah as you can see it happens one of those games basically everything was dead and in the first three or four minutes um i think it was uh it was down to just me and Tagus up the top there uh then he died and then i was left on my own against you know uh what was that five enemy ships it was it was never going to end but you know you can't win them all 
you can almost win them all, but 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 sometimes sometimes you just can't. Right, next battle, eight hundred base XP. All right, wasn't my uh, wasn't my finest showing, but again, third place on the team. Uh, the Gajamadi and the Normandy, you know, both having very very impressive games and uh, and uh, taking the win. Um, I did actually, I remember this. I did actually bounce the Nagato. I believe I was on the left hand flank. Uh, there was the Nagato over there, the Gneisenauer, the Prince Idol, Frederick, and Devonshire. And uh, we lost a couple of ships. I was kind of on my own. I was taken out fairly early. I uh, I done my best to... No, it wasn't the Devonshire. It was the New Orleans, because I remember killing the New Orleans. And, uh, and yeah, basically, they, they did. They, they won the side. I tried to stay alive and slow them down for as long as I could, and well, you know, it worked. It was uh, it was a reasonable battle. There we go. White right, next one. Uh, Twenty six hundred base XP again. Uh, this time actually joined by Bick in this Cleveland, and again, this gentleman had a, had an absolutely cracky game in the Cleveland. Uh, in all fairness, we 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 pretty much worked together this whole game. Um, it was. Uh, it was really quite good, um, quite good teamwork. Uh, again, look, you're up against Nagatos, Vlads, Iowas, Mains, Odins. Do you know what I mean? Ships, ships that have armor that they're saying, "Ooh, that little trash panda won't touch them." Well, well, yeah, yeah, no, actually, 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 it does. It it really does. Uh, next game, oh, okay, we did, we did kind of poorly in uh, this one, honestly. I can't really remember what happened to you. I don't think I don't think I died. No, I didn't die. It was literally if you just look at it, it's just that team just absolutely melted. Uh I get Graph Speed, Mayoko, Talon, Gajamade. Uh, all had really good games. And uh yeah, it kinda makes it hard when uh, when your team's too good. <laughs> and uh, that was one of those fortunate times and then there we go the last game that i just got off playing again another 2000 base xp uh i actually killed the london and the talon within about 15 seconds of each other um i caught uh, i caught the talon broadside push around the corner and he managed to turn his guns and fire one salvo and that was it that's all he had and then the London very quickly pushed out from the opposite side of me. I flipped these uh, these super fast guns around, uh, quick sharp, and uh, and and finished him off uh, with three salvos, about nine seconds. Um, yeah. So anyone who's going to argue in my face and tell me that the Tiger is a bad ship is categorically wrong. I will say it is very difficult to play all british cruisers are difficult to play it is something that i i'd like to think that i kind of specialize in i very much enjoy the play style of uh, of the british cruisers um so you know don't expect to be getting 25 2600 base xp every game i will <laughs> no joking uh, i i have i have managed to 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 do that pretty much uh, the entirety of the day even with new ship syndrome where everyone's shooting at you as well. So I think this thing is only going to become more powerful the the further you get into it. Um, damage wise, um, I'm going to be honest, it's not it's not the most amazing machine for damage. But it's good for winning. <laughs> That's what it does. It's very good at taking caps. It's very good at pushing away destroyers. It's very good at dealing with cruisers. It's it can struggle against bow tanking battleships um although you, you know you you can reliably hit them and reliably score damage but you know something's something big's dumb enough to go broadside to you you're doing three four maybe five k salvos every three seconds so they tend to turn away pretty quickly when you start racking up damage like that so uh, i'm just being just trying to be as honest as i can just trying to give a uh, a genuinely uh a genuinely unbiased opinion which is difficult because i like british ships and because i like british ships i play them a lot and because i play them a lot tiger is genuinely to me brilliant to play it's a lot of fun it has the one key thing that all other british cruisers apart from the edinburgh can't do 
and uh, and that's push and yeah that's 100 percent something you can do in this right okay this video is getting really long so we're going to get into the gameplay and uh, and we're going to check out the kraken match so thank you very much uh for stopping by and uh i hope you enjoy the gameplay right okay so here we are finally uh loading up into uh into battle and I'm, I'm not gonna lie i'll be honest this matchmaking was looking pretty good for us they only had one battleship which was poltava which only has 12 inch guns so i can literally bow tank absolutely everything uh we mar on the enemy team two belfasts and uh, so obviously my my biggest counterparts being there or oh, i do have another tiger 59 uh, on my team, we've got a Graf Spey Benson. So there's a couple of uh, couple of DDs in there as well. Obviously, having a radar cruiser, uh, two radar cruisers on our team, was uh, was a big advantage. Right. Okay. So my initial thoughts here were, um, I'm gonna look to defend both B and C. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push you to C. But my my plan is to use those islands uh, right there in the middle of the map to uh, uh to, to be able to essentially radar uh both both b and c simultaneously uh as you know as as the opportunities uh present themselves uh unfortunately we do have a dd that's uh, that's just sitting there right in the start of the battle um so that that's a, that's always a bit of shame a bit of shame uh losing some eyes but we do have uh we do have a DD uh, pushing uh, out on the uh, on the far side of C, so uh, you know we, we've got some eyes, and uh, and that's definitely uh, definitely going to help us out as the enemy Poltava uh, is almost instantly spotted. And there we go. There's the, uh, the first uh, enemy Belfast uh, to arrive into the battle. Their carrier sort of hovering between B and A, which, in all fairness, is is pretty good for us. Um, Although the Tiger, uh, one thing I did uh, fail to point out is, is the Tiger does have pretty good um, AA, uh, actually. Um, all the British cruisers have good AA capabilities. And uh, obviously, you kind of see me showing off, like, wiggling the turrets. The turrets on this thing, the traverse speed is just uh, unreal. Uh, so take a couple of shots at the Belfast. Uh, nothing, nothing too spectacular. And look, we've already got our turrets facing the other side. Because uh, our plan is, we don't want, nobody wants a wiener hiding behind a, an island being, where, being dangerous. So a couple of salvos in this general direction is enough to make him uh, turn tail and head off. Uh, so um, I believe that might be our fellow tiger that's behind us uh, doing some uh, not insignificant damage. Uh, to the Belfast, uh, we've got a bunch of torps heading towards the Belfast, and here we get to see these these actually quite punchy little guns on a broadside Belfast. It's 5k in a salvo. There's another 4k, 5k in a salvo. Uh, another 2k, and this is every 2.9 seconds you can fire these guns. And you know, even when they don't hurt that much, uh, they do help put the enemy down. Uh, pretty darn quickly so B's not contested there is a DD around C but they're not pushing C um, the only thing we have to deal with really over here or at least that we know about is the uh, is the Poltava now hopefully one of our two DDs uh, sorry one of our, D our DD and our carrier will uh, will be able to do some sufficient damage to him um, we can see we're approaching this island, so I'm thinking, right, right, he's just fired his gun, so I, I can shoot him. He's, you know, he's got, he's gonna have like 20 odd seconds to reload. 20 odd seconds, hell, I can, I can pump out eight, eight, maybe even nine salvos before this guy even, uh, can even fire back to me. And we're approaching the island, so, you know, these are free salvos. Absolutely free. And, and there we go. We scored, you know, 10,000 damage on that Poltava that quickly. Uh, so people who think these guns, <laughs> this ship's not dangerous because it's only got four guns. You are, you are very sadly mistaken. So we're keeping an eye on that Akatsuki that's over there. There's also a Gacha Madi in, uh, in the middle. And well, we have got shots on him. So uh, we're gonna abuse that. Poltava can't touch us because the island's in the way. And in all fairness, even if the Poltava could shoot at us, 
um, it wouldn't make any difference. Would, wouldn't make any difference at all. Uh, so what's that? 4K, 4K on the catcher. He was starting to get dodgy and at that distance, the 40 shells. In all fairness, just wasn't worth the uh, wasn't worth the effort. And there we go. Full salvo from the Paul Tarver, and all you can do is dung 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 dung. Uh, him just bouncing off us. Uh, badly aimed first salvo there, but uh, but our second salvo uh, starts to score some hits. Scored even more hits on the island, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, but yeah, one of the, the sort of curse of uh, of the British cruisers they accelerate really fast. But uh, but their, uh, their their ability to change speed is uh, quite slow. But uh, our Akatsuki spots their Akatsuki. Their Akatsuki decides, oh, you know what? I'll I'll, I'll smoke up. This is this is going to work out fantastically for me. Uh, torpedoes are spotted, so we uh, we do actually fire up our smoke. I didn't mean to. I pressed the wrong button for the. Uh, the radar and uh, there we go Akatsuki is down and uh, that's a is off first no first kill of the match now all seems to be going fairly well over here um, you know we've, uh, we've we've killed two ships uh, out of the three ships that have died so far over here we're about to uh, secure kill number three um, yes I haven't done much to this Poltava you know uh, we're, uh, we're 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 getting up there almost on uh, on f well, just over forty thousand damage, and yes, we are gonna. No, nope, we're not. We're not gonna yonk the kill on Poltava, but we are gonna help finish him off. Right. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of going well for our team, but but kind of not. We are still one ship down. The scoreboard is looking fairly even. We're uh, we're barely holding a lead, but they are capturing B. And um, if you look at the minimap, pay attention, they are capturing E as well. Uh, they've completely won the flank, and yeah, get, now it's now it's turned into a uh, a, a three versus five uh, situation, which you know is uh, is not particularly great. Or it wouldn't be if my tiger wasn't still absolutely full health, and I still haven't used a heal. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, this is uh, th this is going to be interesting. So, uh, torpedoes fired by the uh, Gachi Mada. You can tell that because uh, of the deep water marker. Uh, their Uber is capturing me. Uh, we're going to try and reset him. And yeah, we uh, come around over close enough to spot the Gacha. He's going to fire torps, but Tiger pretty light on its feet. It does turn quite well, um, very easily. Uh, finish him off and uh, Aoba makes a bit of a mistake here definitely makes uh, definitely makes a mistake here by uh, by sailing broadside we're getting resets we're slowing him down we notice okay there's a Belfast behind him Belfast is lower health see not nice little easy two citadels there um, so if we can reset the Belfast and uh, and slow their cap in progress down uh, even more Unfortunately, Belfast kind of gets away from him. But look, two cruisers firing at us, and because of the uh, because of the additional armor of the Tiger, and there we're going to use uh, use our first heal. We've essentially lost what by the time this heal finishes three thousand hit points. It's not a big deal at all. In all fairness. That's absolutely fine. Yes, the Belfast keeps on resetting us, but we're stopping them from getting any points. Um, and unfortunately, we couldn't stop them getting any, but we definitely slowed them down. But we have lost another ship. So now it is a 2v5. And, uh, and my DD, like in all fairness to him, he's had a pretty good game. He was instrumental in taking out the, uh, the Poltava uh, er earlier on. But uh, he's... He's just going after the carrier, which I don't blame him. And Belfast makes a mistake. He pops himself out. He's on absolutely no health whatsoever. And there we go. That secures our third kill. So it's now a 2v3. And Aoba pops out very low health. Um, we're getting a couple of salvos off. Yeah, unfortunately, 
miss some salvos. Gonna go for the uh, classic blind firing smoke, but uh, but unfortunately he is uh, he's he's gonna remain hidden from us, which I don't blame him. Exactly uh, exactly the right move to make. Uh, so we're located. So Dee is gonna be the closest thing to me. I accidentally popped my smoke because I was looking to pop the radar, not the smoke. <laughs> again for the uh, for the second time this match and uh, and there we go we uh, we don't actually finish the Yoba but we see the Akatsuki which obviously much harder to spot our last uh, our last uh, radar so you know we definitely want to try and get rid of him as uh, as quickly as possible we uh, we unfortunately miss with our blind fires uh, but What's more important to us to take out? The Aoba, who's got no health, or chase the DD whilst the DD's right there. We know exactly where he is. Um, so we are going to turn and, uh, and try and uh, try and find this Akatsuki in his smoke. Uh, Akatsuki completely does, makes the wrong play here. He sits in his smoke trying to torpedo us. We're going to finesse this a little bit and make sure we don't overturn into the torpedoes. Um, our DD takes down their carrier. Uh, we are now back to a, uh, a 2v2. And uh, yeah, if he ran away at this point, he could have got away with it. You know, we take a uh, we take an AP salvo from the Orba, but it barely affects us. And there we go. There we go. We score our Confederate medal our fourth kill and uh, and again we take a nasty AP salvo from the Yoba but honestly it wasn't that bad because of our armor and uh, and yeah we've healed it all back so we are here at the very end of the game after scoring four kills with 23 we've only lost 10 000. we haven't even lost a third of our hit points overall which kind of points out the uh, the survivability bonus of the tiger over over the belfast so, like, the belfast i definitely wouldn't have pushed pushed the belfast and another reorba the Uber could have, could have penetrated the the front it could have overmatched the 13 mil armor um so on honestly like this game it was because i was in the tiger uh if i was in if I was in a Belfast, don't think I would have been able to pull it out. And there we go, there's the Eorba gone and the Kraken unleashed, uh, achieved. So, uh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> we, don't have, we do have a premium account, but we don't have any credit boosters running us. 34,000 uh, base XP and just over 700,000 silver or after ship expenses, 600, call it 650,000. Uh, silver made in that match. Uh, credit to the Akatsuki, like I said, he did have a good game. Our whole team did well, and credit the Gajamada on the enemy team, the Yoba and the Belfast, uh, all have pretty decent games, and there's me making sure that this is saved on my console, because everyone knows my recording software sucks. So, thank you very much for stopping by. I do hope you found this uh, this informative, and uh, it give you a bit of a better insight into the Tiger. And uh, as always, till next time, take care.